I thought about doing the mid-year book tag and then I was just like nah hey guys welcome back to my channel it's me Chrissy and I'm here with a uh, whatever this is actually I think it's just gonna be me recapping um, all the books that I've read um, all the way up to July and kind of mid-August so that I don't have to do this at the end of the year um, they're in no particular order but I'm gonna start with the ones I didn't like, just so we can kind of get that out of the way. Um, there weren't really a lot that I didn't like. Just this. The Heather, The Totality by Matthew Weiner. It's literally three different perspectives on one person. It... I didn't like it. Um, 10th of December. Um, this was recommended to me at one point and I wanted to pick it up and I did. Uh, I was able to get the spider head which I might do a book versus movie review. Um, but other than that I was just not interested in reading any of the other stories in here so I just I just stopped. This was my actually my first DNF of the year. Enchanter Air by Cinda Williams Chima. I really like this. It brought me back to when I used to read um, these, the series. I had a lot to remember and it was hard, but I just remember kind of like the gists of it. So at least there was that. And then um, Nicola, Nicola Machiavelli's On Conspiracies. This is really good um, if you're in a leadership position, what not to do. And then you have Blue Like Jazz. You know what's weird is that it feels like I read this last year, even though I know I read it this year. Um, Oldie But A Goodie Eve, Babbitt's Black Swans. Um, she, I can't recommend her enough. Like, for, let's say you've read Joan Didion, she would be the polar opposite, and it's taking place in the same timeline. <laughs> even though it's actually, like, really real stories about, like, the 60s and the 70s um, in L.A., so how serious Joan Didion is, Eve Babbitts is frivolous, but she comes at it with a really refreshing point of view that really resonates with a lot of people today. And I really do recommend anything and all Eve Babbitts. Um, this next one, I'm gonna... These next two are huge. I've had them on my bookshelf for years. And I don't understand why I didn't... I didn't pick it up sooner because it's actually really an, a fast read and that is Wonderstruck by Brian Selznick and The Invention of Hugo Cabret by Brian Selznick and they they look like this like their spines they're so beautiful um I can't recommend these enough like they're very good um I read Charles Bukowski's on love it's a lot of short stories or poems rather it's a lot of poems um lots of women uh i don't know much about them i just know i wanted to read this i did that's it i don't really have much else to add to that ogilvy on advertising um advertising isn't marketing i'm reading this i read this to improve my work it helps actually most of these are good practice but some of these are also outdated because like thanks to um like ai and um, the way we do marketing now a lot of what he said doesn't really apply anymore like he likes to write essays on um, products and like nobody reads that much anymore and that's funny coming from a booktube channel but what I mean is like are you gonna read an essay about a product <laughs> um, just as an introductory on like social media especially with like how small our phone screens are and everything so they did advertising differently then and now we do um marketing and advertising kind of differently now so that's it just seeing those parallels you know um if you are a marketing girly comment down below we can talk about it um for asian aai month um i'm not i'm asian so i i remember picking this up in um the secondhand bookstore and all of these, um, all of these authors right here um, are all Asian Americans, um, immigrants, or second gen, first gen. And it's 
so beautiful like everything here um of course like i had a couple favorites because like with short story collections not everything is amazing and there are always a few standouts so i've had um a couple of standouts from here that i really liked um i put it back in plastic because i might be selling this later um the vegetarian by han kang this was such a big thing on booktube before and then i finally read it and then i'm like what did i read what i'm still like trying to piece it together and the closest person that i could think of um to describe the what of it all that she reminds me of is angela carter so i also have um i think uh the white something in somewhere in my library um i'll be picking that up soon or maybe next year because she's really interesting to read actually um joan didion the year of magical thinking beautiful so so much pain um with the, with this one it didn't occur to me till like i shut the book and then it's like the the um the blue letters actually spell out her husband's name and that was just after reading like i read all of it and it was just so heartbreaking and then i shut the book and then i realized that i just lost it um next i have wishful drinking by carrie fisher and then um for this one, um, it kind of has, re it reminds me of her other memoir, Shockaholic. Um, you might want to read that too. Because she's very, very funny and she's a really, really good writer. For some reason, I, I'm i more drawn to her memoirs than her fiction. Because she has like memoir, mem memories of grandma, postcards from the edge, something like that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, write it down, you know. Or I'll write it, I don't know. Anyway, um yeah this reminded me of that but this one was more of like her relationship with her mom and her as a mom to her daughter so that was pretty good and also i really wish she had written more because she's really great um storied life of aj fikri this was huge on book two huge <laughs> um it's so good like i at first i was not because the main character is not likable and i was like yeah you know mm. but i mean that's the beauty of books right it turns you around um eventually i got so invested i don't know what else to say except it was so good but i would also really like other people to go into this kind of blind you know if you love books and you just want to experience a story like this i'd say go into it um next we have cersei by Madeline Miller, huge. Um, I wasn't expecting to really like this, so I just thought, okay, you know, uh, mythology retelling. But wow, this kind of really blew me out of the water. Like when it came to um, the progression of the story, the way it flowed, it's just so calming to read. Like, a high like a, an adventure like this but it also is calming and it's peaceful to read and it kind of just relaxes you at least it relaxed me um i really look forward to that when i read books um next i have after the body displaces water by daryl delgado short stories a filipino author so good um i am upset i didn't pick this up sooner it's a couple months ago that I read this now and then I just had to like sit for a moment and just think about it because um, if you're if I have any Filipino um, watchers you guys should look for this and pick it up it's very good especially if you kind of want to get into more Filipino books um, and I am not very good at reading Tagalog so whenever I see an English um, version I just jump on it um half broke horses by Jeanette walls if you've read the glass castle and watch the movie both heartbreaking both really inspiring um this one is about her grandmother and what i love about it is that it's written in the same way that she wrote glass castle so i finished this just as fast as i finished glass castle and it sucks because it's like doesn't she have any more like cool people or cool memories to go through because i'm like i just love the way she writes 
her memoirs. I know I think she's written some fiction, but I I'm not sure I um you know I'd be interested yet yet. Around the corner around the world, this is the um kind of like the it's a Dunkin' Donut memoir from the CEO. <laughs> Um, the son of the guy who um, founded Dunkin Donuts became the CEO for like 30 plus years? 35? 25? Uh, 35 year CEO of Dunkin Donuts. And here you learn about Dunkin Donuts, how it started, the rivalry with Mr. Donut. Uh, that one was interesting because they're the same family, literally the same family. And then you have um, his lessons here on leadership and what it means to like to continue company culture and stuff like that and i think that's so so important when it comes to like leading and um you know running a business not that i know but it's just nice also the font was duncan font you know, i just got hungry for donuts the whole time i was reading that and um last on to my latest three books that i finished reading um Sisterhood Everlasting by Anne Brashears. Remember the um, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants series? This is the fifth book. Fifth? Fourth? Well, it uh, takes place 10 years later. They're all in their like 30s and everybody's like living life or not living life. And you can kind of see how they've progressed or regressed. But at the same time, I read the uh, reviews of this first and i was like okay my expectations are really low because they weren't so good but um being a 30 something now and reading this i'm just like you know it makes sense that they would still be kind of hung up some of them on like teenage stuff because it really form it really like formed them as like a human so i can get moving on but i can also get where your your hang-ups are and I was just so surprised by the ending of this. I was like really touched. Um, but it was a good ending. Um, and then I read Grave Mercy by Robin Lefevers. Lefevers? Yeah. I would have liked this better when I was younger. Like I would have totally jumped on this when I was younger. But I've had it on my bookshelf for years. And I just like, you know, I'm gonna read it. Um, and I'm happy that I did. I'm looking into the rest of the series. But I probably won't be getting to it. Um, but yeah. This is a pretty good like palate cleanser. And then um, for one ng wika here in the Philippines, I decided to pick up Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Manansala. I've never really read cozy mysteries before. I've just read thrillers and I didn't like them because I prefer to watch a thriller rather than, you know, constantly be in a state of like suspense while I'm reading a book and it takes me two weeks. I'm constantly in suspense. Um, so at least with this one, it was so cozy, so fun, and it made me so hungry. So freaking hungry. Um, but yeah, that's it. Um, it's just really good. If you haven't read this yet, I really, really highly recommend you pick this up. So that's it. Those are all the books that I've read um, in the first half of 2023. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for sticking around. Did you stick around this long? I don't know. If you did, just comment. Um, if I mention the book and you want to discuss it, let's talk in the comments. Um, that's it. Bye.